So um, we are going to continue a little bit longer our work on breath because, let's face it, it's, uh, it's the most important thing that we can study is our breathing because without it, there is no life. What I find interesting myself, I don't know about you guys, but it's so important and yet it's a thing that we're not very good at. And we don't really think about it that often about being better breathers in our life. So um, I hope that with our studies at the Shala that we become better breathers in, in our yoga practice, of course, but the true goal for us is to be better breathers in life too. So like anything else we do on our mats is always what we do here is really about how we take it into our lives. So this past week um, we went into the exhale. So we've been studying being better inhalers on the mat, being out there breathing deep in life more and getting more oxygen into our system. And uh, the week before then we also studied the importance of retention which is something we do as a practice um, not in our yoga practice, but separate. So let's talk a little bit about an exhale. What happens when we exhale? We've got our favorite doctor in the house here. So, Jen, tell us what, how, why exhale? What's the point? Rising of the diaphragm. Rising of the diaphragm. Exhalation of carbon dioxide and other stuff too, right? It's an interesting, right. And Eric is wanting to tell us about yeah. <laughs> what about it? It stimulates it, the exhale. Yes. And what does the parasympathetic system actually control for us? The relaxation The what? Relaxation Exactly. I, I, I was a tip in for Eric to, to chime in and say that because what we've been studying with the inhalation is how it's the thing that sort of ignites us and gives us energy, right? And we've been trying to get more of that to our deeper, better breathing. Interestingly enough, then we have this exhale, which does something very different for us. It's, um, it causes a rela relaxation response. It lowers our, our blood pressure. And so breathing in our yoga practice becomes a sort of yin-yang, stira, sukham thing, right? Where we are on one hand coming here and breathing and getting energized. And at the exact same time, we're coming here and we're getting zened out and calm, right? So it's this beautiful combination with every single cycle of breath that we're doing where we're energizing and we're moving into that place where we relax. And then we add movement to it. And so the body is also really learning how to use muscles efficient, efficiently and effectively in our yoga poses and of course in life we've been talking about too. But at the same time where I'm um, contracting muscles and using them, I also as a yoga practitioner have to learn at the exact same time where to let go of a muscle, right? We can't be doing a pose and all tensed up in it. We have to be able to, for example, up dog, we've been studying up dog for the inhales and increasing that, that movement. And although we want to push down through the hands and be really strong through here, where do we want to kind of relax in up dog? What are the muscles you want to relax when you're pushing down and stretching the front of your shoulders want to move down? Where else do you want to relax in up dog? hips, or how about the lower back? How about your butt muscles? If you're tensing that, up dog could be a train wreck, right? Not be so good for us. But when we're strong through here, but then relaxing through here and here, it's beautiful. So it's this, this beautiful combination for us of yin yang. So in our yoga practice, what I personally notice myself and with um, you, the beautiful students, is that we are better exhalers than inhalers, but even sometimes in our exhales, um, they're either short and powerful, or they're short and then we hold our breath until the next cycle, right? So what we're meant to do, we talk about in yoga, is this idea of a yama, where we're gonna stretch them out equally. The inhale matches the exhale, so I don't wanna be like this. But sometimes when we work out, we, we might have that breath. But in yoga, we really have to train the breath to stretch out. So it's like you want to drink the water equally. You don't want to gobble it all down at the beginning and then have nothing left at the end. So when we do our inhale, movement comes up and we stretch that breath. It's the same for the exhale. Rather than exhale, hold the breath, hold the breath, hold the breath, hold the breath. It's 
exhale, 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 is the idea that we're, we're working towards. So in your practice today, I want you guys to focus on, of course, the inhale. We're still doing our beautiful up dogs and trying to stretch out your inhales when you enter an asana. But as well, I want you guys to also think today of stretching out your exhales and making them sound like this. all the way through movement. Just do that now. All right, even in doing that, don't you feel like, yeah, <laughs> nothing's too stressful, nothing's gonna, you know, bend me today, right? So just think of that on your mats today and also throughout um, the rest of your day, maybe doing some nice long exhales. And so the other thing that we have been studying with our spring and Easter is the idea that we are surrounded by miracles, surrounded by the beauty of spring and, and, and living here in paradise and, and all the blessings in our life. So I have been reading Walt Whitman's uh, poem, Miracles, and asking you guys to use your yoga practice, use your breath to very, be very mindful out in your lives um, as springtime is around us to just observe all the beauty and all the miracles that are happening in our lives. So um, we'll finish this conference with a reading of Miracles by Walt Whitman. Why, who makes much of miracles? As to me, I know of nothing else but miracles. Whether I walk the streets of Manhattan, or dart my sight over roofs of houses towards the sky, or wade with naked feet along the beach just at the edge of the water, or stand under trees in the woods, or talk by day with anyone I love, or sleep in bed at night with anyone I love, or sit at a table at dinner with the rest, or look at strangers opposite me riding in a car, or watch honeybees buzzing around the hive of the summer forenoon, or animals feeding in the field, or birds, or the wonderfulness of insects in the air, or the wonderfulness of sundown, or the stars shining so quiet and bright, or the exquisite, delicate, thin curve of the new moon of spring. These with the rest, one and all, are to me miracles. The whole referring yet each distinct in its place, to me, every hour of light and dark is a miracle. Every cubic inch of space is a miracle. Every square yard of the surface of the earth is spread with the same. Every foot of the interior swarms with the same. To me, the sea is a continual miracle. The fishes that swim, the rocks, the motion of the waves, the ship with men in them. What stranger miracles are there? So Walt ends with a question that I've asked all of you, and we're asking our extended family on our YouTube site to consider writing a sequel to Miracles. Miracles 2, that is going to begin with his last line, which is, what stranger miracles are there? And trust me, this is sort of a practice, sort of like when we do our meditation practice on gratitude. It starts to become the lens that you see things through. When I was writing my sequel to uh, Miracles, I was just spending time with my niece like I always do, and there was this really cool hummingbird. She loves hummingbirds so much that came so close to us. And because I was gonna be writing the poem, I'm like, ah, the hummingbird is such a miracle. And to have it that close to us feels so miraculous. So even though I would have normally enjoyed that, all of a sudden it became to me the miracle. So I'm hoping that in you writing your poetry, I think all of us should have po poetry in our lives and be poets as well. Um, to just be letting it all come to you as you see things and smell things and hear things and be with people this week to just count them all as miracles and write them down for your poem. Or we've also invited you guys to send pictures to um, our website. So we've had people sending pictures of the wildflowers that they're seeing. Um, we just had someone um, raise grandbaby. We just got a picture of her little two-day-old feet as a miracle. And then Debbie that just got back from uh, Africa sent some pictures to us as well. So just allow yourself to just see all the miracles in your life and feel free to share them with us as well. And um, just feel blessed and, and um, very grateful this week for all the miracles that you have. As always, 
नमस्कार